Supply and demand is going to be the workhorse. You're going to see it over and over again. You really need to get it down and get a good grasp of what's going on here. So supply and demand, when we think about what determines the price of a smartphone, you need to think about, uh, you can think about it as two, the two blades of scissors, thinking about this in a competitive market. On the one hand, we have demand for smartphones. On the other hand, we have supply. So on the demand side, how many smartphones do consumers want to buy? That's going to be affected by the price of smartphones, of course, and then other factors that we'll look at as well, including the prices of other goods, like substitutes and complements. We'll, we'll look at those in detail in a second. On the other side, we have supply of smartphones. How many smartphones are producers willing to sell? This, of course, will be affected by the price of smartphones. The more, the higher the price of, of smartphones, the more suppliers would be willing to supply. And supply, like demand, is also affected by other factors, including the prices of other goods. So, like I said, we're thinking about this in a perfectly competitive market where there are many buyers and many sellers. All firms are selling identical products and there are no barriers to firms entering the market. So these are simplifying assumptions, right, in this model, but it's a tool to help us analyze the world. Okay, on the demand side. So here is a typical demand schedule. Uh, we're looking at um, a demand schedule is a table that shows the relationship between price and quantity demanded. Uh, and the quantity demanded is just the amount of good uh, the, the amount of the good or service that consumers are willing and able to purchase at a given price. So this is listed out for all of these various prices, how many uh, smartphones consumers are willing and able to buy at these prices. So over here it's a demand curve, here is the demand schedule. So here, yeah, here is the demand curve, it just shows the relationship between the price and the quantity of the product demanded. So this is for uh, just uh, smartphones, right? Um, market demand would be the demand by all the consumers of a given good or service. So that's what we're looking at here because we're just considering the, markets, the market for smartphones. When we draw the demand curve, we are making one significant assumption. We call it ceteris paribus. It just means everything else being equal. So when we're looking at two variables like price and quantity demanded here, all the other variables were holding constant. So this is the price, the prices of all other related goods and services. We're thinking about, we'll look at this in a second, but uh, taste, consumer preferences, uh, the expect, expectation about future price, all those things were holding equal when we draw this demand curve. The law of demand is basically that there is an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. So we're going to see a downward sloping demand curve is what we, what we expect. The law of demand is basically that um, when the price of the product increases, the quantity demanded is going to fall. When the price of the product falls, the quantity demanded will expect to increase, right? So this, this would be movements along the curve. So we expect that demand curves will slope downward. Okay, why, if the price falls, would consumers purchase more? Why would, if price falls, would quantity demanded go up? On the one hand, if the price falls, the product becomes cheaper relative to other goods. So consumers substitute toward it. Um, this is the substitution effect. At the same time, we also have, uh, as the price of the good falls, the consumer now has greater purchasing power. They're spending less of their total budget um, compared to what they were doing before. So now the consumer can also purchase more goods overall. So this is the income effect. So these are two key terms that you want to be familiar with here, substitution and income. Okay, when we talk about an increase in demand or a decrease in demand, we're talking about shifts to the demand curve. Not increase in quantity demanded, not in decrease in quantity demanded, but increase and decrease in demand. So when you think increased demand, decreased demand, think shifters. These are things that shift the demand curve. So an increase in demand is going to be a shift to the right. A decrease in demand would be a shift to the left. Okay. So as the demand curve shifts, the quantity demanded will change, even if the price doesn't change, right? So if we, if we have this shift here moving from this point to this point, that quantity demanded is changing, even though the price is constant. Same thing for a shift this way. The quantity demanded is now lower, even though we're at the same price. So this is, we're talking about shifts here. 
what would th- what would cause the demand curve to shift? Uh, income a change in the income of consumers. If uh, income if consumers' income goes up and the good is a normal good, demand for that good is going to increase. Uh, demand will decrease if that product is inferior. We'll look at we'll look at these again in a second. So this this is uh, normal and inferior goods. We can also think about substitutes and complements. Uh, we'll look at this again in a second. These would shift our demand curve. We also have things like tastes, population, and demographics, and expected future prices. You want to be really familiar with all of these, all of these shifters of the demand curve, and then we'll see similar shifters for the supply curve. Go through these. You want to know them. You want to be able to draw the graphs, figure out why the curves are shifting. So a normal good. Uh, examples of this would be things like clothing. As your income goes up, uh, your demand in, your demand increases. Things like clothing, eating out at restaurants, vacations. As your income goes up, uh, you're going to demand more of these things. Versus an inferior good, as your income goes up, your demand for these things falls. This would be things like secondhand clothing, ramen noodles, right? Okay, what do you think about smartphones? Would that be a normal or an inferior good? As your income goes up, what's going to happen to the demand for smartphones? It would, uh, demand for smartphones would go up as your income goes up, so smartphones are normal goods. Okay, substitutes, goods and service that can be used for the same purpose. This would be like butter and margarine, Big Mac and a Whopper, F-150 and Dodge Ram, right, uh, versus compliments. Uh, goods and services that are that are used together, uh, Big Mac and McDonald's fries, hot dogs and hot dog buns, left shoes and right shoes, right? Okay, this is what I was uh, kind of getting at before with that change in demand versus change in quantity demanded. A change in demand is a shift. A change in quantity demanded is a movement along the curve. So a change in the price of the product being examined Right, we're looking at smartphones. A change in the smartphone price is a movement along the curve. This is a change in the quantity demanded. Versus a change in any of those other shifters that we're talking about, that leads to a shift in demand. So this is a movement along the curve that results from a change in the price of this good of smartphones versus one of those shifters that we talked that we talked about that moves the curve. Okay, similarly, uh, supply is just like demand except in reverse, basically, right? Uh, so we have a supply schedule, just like a demand schedule, supply curve, just like a demand curve, except notice it is upward sloping. As the price of smartphone rises, uh, suppliers are more willing to supply more and more smartphones. And just like the demand curve, the supply curve is drawn ceteris paribus. We're holding everything else constant. Prices of uh, related goods, basically all the supply shifters that we're looking at, the, the curve is drawn holding those constant. Okay, so a change in one of those supply shifters, anything besides the price of this good that we're looking at, the price of the smartphones, um, any of the, a change in the supply shifters is going to cause a shift of the supply curve, either an increase to the right or a decrease to the left. So this is just like the demand curve. Okay, here are shifters of the supply curve. You need to know these backwards and forwards. Go through lots of examples of uh, figuring out why the curves shift uh, and what causes each curve to shift, both demand and supply. So I'll just go through one of these examples with inputs. You need to go through all of these and be very familiar with them. So inputs are used in the production of a good, right? So for smartphones, things would be, inputs would be a computer processor, the housing, the plastic housing, the labor involved. Increase in the price of an input is going to lead to a decrease in the supply a decrease in the price of the input would lead to an increase in supply. And an increase in supply is a shift to the right. Okay, big difference just like demand curve between a change in supply and change in quantity supplied. A change in quantity supplied is a movement along the curve that results from a change in the price of the relevant good that we're looking at. So this movement along the curve is a change in price. So a change in quantity supplied results versus a change in any of those shifters that would be a shift of the supply curve. Change in supply versus change in quantity supplied. Okay, this is really where uh, you should spend your time after you get the, the shifters down and the terminology, putting the two together. This is where we actually are able to make some predictions and see what would happen. Okay, 
the equilibrium, market equilibrium happens at the intersection of supply and demand. Remember that analogy, the scissors? This is where this is what's going to determine the price in a um, uh, competitive market. So at a price of $200 here at this competitive price, consumers want to buy 10 million smartphones and suppliers want to supply 10 million smart smartphones. So we're at an equilibrium. Quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. There's no excess demand. Uh, there's no uh, there's no surplus, right? We'll look at those those terms in a second. So, a market equilibrium with many buyers and sellers is a competitive market equilibrium. So yeah, equilibrium price comes from the equilibrium. Just draw straight over from that intersection and then straight down gives you the equilibrium quantity. And since this market is in equilibrium, we don't expect the the price to change or the quantity to change unless there's some kind of disturbance, one of those shifters. We'll look at that in a second. Okay, imagine that we start right here instead of that market equilibrium. Imagine that we're up here at 250. This is the price initially. So at this price, we go to the demand curve. This is the amount that consumers are demanding, 9 million, versus at this price, suppliers want to supply 11 million. So this gap here, this is saying that uh, we have a surplus of smartphones right now. There are too many smartphones. Um, there are more being produced than what consumers want to buy. And this surplus uh, is going to push down the price. Sellers compete amongst themselves, driving the price down until we get to that market equilibrium. Okay, on the flip side, if we're down here at the price of $100, producers don't want to supply that much. They only want to supply $8 million, but consumers are uh, have a very high quantity demanded of 12 million, right? So in this case, we have a shortage. This distance gives us, gives us the amount of the shortage, 12 minus 8 of 4 million. And in this case, the demanders are going to bid up the price until we get to that market equilibrium of uh, $200 and 10 million smartphones in quantity. So what can we do with this model? Really, uh, what we're going to be able to do is to predict the directional changes in price and quantity traded. We, we can't get the exact magnitude, uh, but we can get directions. Okay, so imagine a shift in supply. How is that going to affect our equilibrium price? If Amazon enters a market, an increase in the number of sellers is an increase in supply, a shift to the right. So that is going to lower the price and increase the quantity. This is what you want to be able to get to, a lower price and equilibrium quantity. That's what you, that's what you need to find. Okay, there are going to be several examples of this with uh, supply shifters and demand shifters. You need to be really familiar with what causes what curve to shift and what will um, be the resulting equilibrium. Will it be a lower price, a higher price, a lower quantity, a higher quantity? Again, we can't get the magnitudes here, but we can get the direction. So this, this table is not something you need to memorize. You just need to be able to work it out on a sheet of paper, drawing a supply and demand curve, thinking about various shifters, and seeing what the resulting equilibrium is. Okay, over time we could see shifts in both supply and demand. Uh, so say they both move to the right for some reason. The shifters have moved them both to the right. In this case, we know definitely that the quantity will increase because supply and demand are moving in the same direction. What we don't know is about what's going to happen to price. It could stay the same, it could rise, it could fall. The way we've drawn it now with the demand having a large shift and supply having a small shift, the price is going to rise. But we don't know about the size of this relative shift here. So here's the point I was making about the ambiguity in price. If demand shifts more than supply, price will rise. But if supply shifts more than demand, price will fall. Okay, so you don't need to memorize this table. What you need to be able to do is figure out uh, by drawing the curves and the shifters, see what happens. Um, will price and quantity increase, decrease? Will something be ambiguous, right? Um, there's a temptation here to think that uh, an increase in supply could cause a change, a change in demand, a shift in demand. But one of those supply shifters doesn't cause a shift in demand. It's a movement along the demand curve. So some helpful tips here. Uh, make sure you keep straight a change in quantity demanded, quantity supplied versus shifts. Those are caused by those shifters, right? A quantity of change in quantity demanded, quantity supplied is caused by a change in the price of, our, of the good that we're looking at. It's okay to exaggerate those curve shifts to make sure you get that direction of the equilibrium. Use your arrows to show which way the curves are shifting. 
And don't forget about the possibility of ambiguity in price and quantity depending on the size of the relative shifts.